Yes everyone, I hope you guys are doing well. Work's over and now you guys can prepare yourself for the game this Saturday against Brighton. You guys, I'm Lini FC, this is Behind CV and welcome to the match preview for tomorrow's game. Now in today's video, I'm going to talk about the press conference. I'm going to delve into the predicted lineup for today's video. It's going to be a bit different because I'm going to focus on how we may look once substitutions get made in the second half. And obviously, make sure that you stay tuned for the tactical segment. You guys know that I do a lot of research, I watch a lot of games, and I feel like sometimes I do tend to be a bit accurate. But of course, you guys, if you do like today's video, please do not forget to press that like button. Help me get over 2,000 likes for today's video. And now, without wasting no more time, let's get straight into things starting with the press conference. We get into things with Lampard revealing that Rudiger does have a recurring groin injury, meaning that he's still going to be out from the first team for a while. Lampard says that we won't be seeing Emerson back until after the international break, but good news is Christensen and Olivier Giroud are both available for the game against Brighton. Lampard says that both Callum and Reese are going to be part of the squad, which doesn't surprise me at all, and this should mean that both will make appearances or from the bench. And I'm expecting tomorrow's game to be very exciting. So you guys definitely make sure you find a live stream for yourselves so you don't miss out on the game. Now Lampard was asked about whether he's worried about us having zero clean sheets this season. Lampard said that he wasn't. And he said it's a team effort. That's the major reason why we're conceding goals. Of course Lampard is right. I've been stressing this for a while now. Our defenders have been good. They do keep their defensive line. It's just that when the midfield isn't there, these guys become susceptible to the overloads, which is naturally going to happen when you're playing at such a high level of football. Now, with Kante being back, I do feel more confident with our ability to keep clean sheets going into the future. Now, talk turn towards youth and Pulisic. Lampard confirmed Pulisic is naturally adapting to the Premier League, stressing he's only 21 and we need to forget about his price tag. Now, oh, thank you Lampard, thank you Frank Lampard. I've said Klopp did this with Keita and Fabinho, Pep did this with Silva. You know what, it's not any different for Pulisic. Lamps is doing the right thing by slowly integrating him into the team so when he does play, he plays with confidence and he's able to show his very best. Lampard went on to speak about the high quality of youth players, emphasising on the depth of quality and to end things, he confirmed that Tomori currently is number one or number two in the pecking order when it comes to centre-backs. Now, this is big news, especially for Tomori, because things could have been very different for him if David Luiz decided to stay because Tomori was going to Everton on loan. That never happened in the end. And it's funny how circumstances worked in his favour. It's no surprise that Lampard is going to have full faith and confidence in Tomori. Lampard coached Tomori last season so of course he's going to understand the player's game. It's going to be interesting to see who Lampard's going to pick to play alongside Tomori. And on that point, boys, I think it's time that we move in straight into the predictor lineup. Now, before we get into the predictor lineup part, today's video is brought to you by my good friends at OneFootball. Now, with the OneFootball app, as I'm constantly stressing, download it every time we're about to play a game because it's convenient. I mean, it's made my life so easy making this match preview. You know, I can see all the lineups that Brian have used throughout the season. I can see their recent form. I can look at opposition as well. I mean, the amount of use you have for the app is ridiculous. If you guys want this, you'll find it in the link in the description below. Now, we finally delve into the predicted lineup part for today's video. As you guys can see beside me, I've gone for a 4-2-3-1. Now, the reason I've gone for this is number one, Kante is back in our midfield, meaning that our defending between our lines becomes better. And I think it's going to be the formation that Lampard uses as he uses other players in the second half. Now, I've gone for Kurt Zuma to partner Tomori at the back. Kurt played well in the previous game. I think him and Tomori have looked good together. And for me, you know, I don't want us to risk any more players getting any other injuries. I think that Christensen doesn't have to play so soon. He can play the next game. And I've gone for another risk because I've got Pulisic playing down the left-hand side. Now, I say this because I think Lampard wants to give him more opportunities. He needs them. He's looked better down the left-hand side as he started this season. I think combining with Mason and obviously combining with uh, the fullback as well is definitely going to help him. And Pulisic could help maintain that team shape 
before someone like Callum hudson Odoi comes on in the second half. I've gone for three different possibilities that may happen in the second half. As you guys can see beside me, starting with the first one, Hudson and Kova replace Pulisic and Jorginho, and I've got Rhys James replacing Aspilicueta at right back. I think this is the standard approach we may see from Lampard, but I think that Lampard may surprise us and do something different. Now, when you have someone like Rhys James in your team, someone that's technically accomplished, it gives you a lot of tactical flexibility. Let's not forget, in the second half of Wigan's season, he played in midfield, so he has a lot more use than just playing as a fullback. Could Lampard potentially have Rhys James playing in a midfield three, playing in the base, let's say to close out the final 10 or 15 minutes of the game? This way, Aspi and Alonso stay in the team. We get to have extra height defending set pieces, and it allows N'Golo Kante to bomb forward and join the attack. Lampard could do something completely different. I've spoken about how in training, Aspi Lequeta has played at left back sometimes, and maybe in tomorrow's game, we may see this. Maybe Alonso gets subbed off, Aspi is then moved to the left hand side, and Reese plays at right back. Playing this way could mean that when we attack, we make a back three with Aspie acting as a wide centre back, allowing Rhys James to fully bomb forward and join the attacks. But I guess for all three predictions, it's going to depend on the context of the game. Are we winning by a high margin? Do we need to contain the game and control things? Or are we trying to get back into the game? Please do not forget, in the comments section below, give me your thoughts and opinions. What lineup would you like to see? And boys, on that note, we delve into the final part for today's video, that's all things tactics, so I hope you guys stay and enjoy. Yes boys, and thank you for still watching. Now boys, we delve in deep with the tactical segment for today's video. Now as you can see, Brighton are going to use their normal 3-4-3 formation. Porter's philosophy is that he wants his teams to keep possession of the ball. Now last season under Hewton, Brian were more of a defensive team that used a 4-1-4 or a 4-5-1, but Porter's come in and he's brought in his own ideals. Now he's brought in a wing-back system, he likes both his wing-backs to get forward inside the opposition thirds. This helps provide width for Brighton's attacks, and this now means their wide forwards can now move in more central, tucking in fields, allowing them the possibility to make runs in behind when the opportunity see fit, as well as linking up with their striker up front. Now a key man for Potter in his system is Ryan Dunk at the back. Now Dunk is a very technically accomplished player and it's no surprise why Leicester City made a big effort to try and sign him as their replacement for Harry Maguire. Dunk's the one that kickstarts Brighton's attacks, he's the one that receives the ball from the goalkeeper, he's allowed the license to carry the ball forward and kickstart attacks as well. Sorry about this you guys, let me just move Tammy out of the way. And on top of that, he has a very good passing range, looking to find the wing backs out wide with long balls obviously linking up with the midfield players. Brighton are another team that like to attack down the flanks, so expect them to play a lot of crosses inside the box. And expect them to attack with three players attacking inside the box. Now to end today's video, we need to talk about what we need to do to get the three points in tomorrow's game. Now when it comes to Brighton, they have two weaknesses. One weakness is, they're susceptible to counter-attacks, and their other weakness is they're poor at defending the wide areas. Now, what makes them so poor? If you look at their back three, they become susceptible to, you know, leaving their positions and breaking their defensive line, and their lives are made harder because if you look at their midfield players here, they're using a 3-4-3 with two in midfield, meaning that they do become susceptible to overloads in central areas. And this is where we can get that advantage because this is where we like to build up our play. The space is in between Brighton's wide centre backs and their wing backs. We can disrupt Brighton's defensive line and stretch their slow central midfield. And that's because obviously their midfield players will need to provide support to the wide centre back and their wing back. And once that happens, it means that we are going to have a free man basically in the central areas and that guy is going to be Jorginho and he's going to be key in facilitating the circulation of our possession play, playing balls from left to right, as well as finding our players, and you guys know what I'm about to say, <laughs> between the lines. Now, additional ways we can disrupt uh, Brighton's offensive line is the movement in behind of Tammy Abraham. Now, if he makes diagonal runs, 
in between both defenders. What it's going to do is it's going to stretch Brighton's defence and it's going to allow for spaces in behind for someone like a Mason Mount or a Christian Pulisic to get inside the box. But the main area in tomorrow's game is how we play between the lines. Our passing needs to be quick. It needs to be fast. We need to suck in the Brighton players into the central areas. Because what we want to do is create an overload down the opposite flank. That's how we like to play. That's how we get in behind teams. And this is going to stretch Brighton because they don't necessarily have the pace throughout the team. And defensively as a unit, they aren't that good. When you combine all these factors together, when you realise that you know we have about four players that are going to be constantly attacking Brighton's books, you can see that with our pace and our movement in behind, it's going to cause Brighton a lot of issues. And the final thing we need to do is use a man marking system against Brighton. You know, Brighton are a team that likes to keep possession of the ball. They like to play out from the back. And, you know, when you play against teams that want to play football in the right way, you need to give these teams a test. If you want to play football with the big boys, let's see how you guys do when we're up close and personal closing you and pressing you down. Now obviously the better the team is, the more press resistant that team is. And of course by using this man marking approach, it means that we can target their best players, affecting their chances in tomorrow's game. Boys, for my final score prediction, I've gone for something audacious, I've gone for a 4-0 win. I don't know, I'm hoping that we do get a clean sheet. I feel like against Brighton, they're our best type of opposition to get a clean sheet against. And I'm expecting positive things in tomorrow's game. But you man, on that note, I'm going to wrap things up and keep things moving. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Lines CV. See you guys later.